So, I made a video about tornadoes that probably should have been EF5, and it sparked a big discussion in the comments. Many people pointed out several tornadoes that are also EF5 candidates, and I've put together four more tornadoes that should have been rated EF5. If you haven't watched the first video, I suggest you do so. Once again, I feel the need to state that this is not an attack on the NWS or their surveying, but rather a fun educational dive into some debatable tornado ratings. Without further ado, let's begin with the least controversial tornado on the list, but I think its story is a good point. Got one tornado on his left wow. and one tornado on his right, very mm. clearly outlined right wow. now on the Doppler scope. This is pretty remarkable stuff. I can't recall ever seeing something like this before. On June 16th, 2014, a supercell would spawn many tornadoes in northeast Nebraska, four of which being EF4. One tornado would impact Pilgrim, Nebraska at EF4 strength, sweeping many labeled well-constructed residences clean. However, these homes were improperly anchored, and as a result, the damage was labeled EF4. The tornado would also obliterate a church, sweeping it completely away, leaving little debris. As it exited Pilgrim, it would continue to hit many farmsteads at EF4 intensity, sweeping everything away. As it tracked through farm fields, extremely visible cycloidal marks would be left behind something associated with the highest end tornadoes. Damage surveys later showed all structures in and around Pilger had no anchoring, or if they did have anchoring, it was oftentimes poor. As a result, even though the tornado exhibited intense winds by sweeping all the well-built homes it impacted away and leaving extremely visible cyclotal marks, because of poor anchoring, it was rated EF4 with estimated winds of 191 miles per hour. The other three EF4s that touched down in close proximity would also sweep many well-constructed homes away, but due to no homes in the area having good anchoring, they couldn't be rated EF5. Many other tornadoes have fallen into this pool of hitting areas or structures with poor building codes. So let's move into some tornadoes that did hit and sweep away well-constructed and anchored homes, yet we're still not rated EF5 due to some questionable reasons. Look at the uh, VRAD radar. Uh... Yeah, it's it's words just don't describe. It. It's it's still on the ground and it's. Between the 27th to the 30th of April 2014, 83 tornadoes would touch down, including two EF4s, one of which would touch down in central Arkansas. During the tornado's life, it would impact Mayflower in Valonia, Arkansas. The tornado would tear through Valonia and would sweep several well-built homes away. When surveying the damage, it was noted that many of the swept away homes were anchored with cut nails rather than anchor bolts. Cut nails are not as strong as anchor bolts. At one house, those anchoring nails were torn out of the foundation. Another house that would be properly anchored was completely swept away. However, surveyors would question how much damage was caused by flying debris from downtown Valonia, rather than the winds. Surveyors also noted that nearby trees near a ditch were still standing. Both reasons would hold the tornado back from an EF-5. The NWS office in Little Rock, Arkansas noted that if this tornado had been rated with the original Fujita scale, it would have likely been rated F-5, but instead it was rated EF-4 with estimated maximum speeds of 190 miles per hour. I think the reason of trees still standing nearby causing it to get a lower rating is kind of questionable. First of all, we don't even understand how tornadoes create their damage, and a lot of times strong tornadoes exhibit multi-vortex structure, which always seems to create very erratic damage paths, as the concentrated winds are very small, but I will touch on this later. And this next tornado would also be rated EF4 because of surrounding area. The si look at the signature in that. Look at the rotation that we're getting in this one. All right, so very, very strong tornado. Again, as I mentioned before, debris now lofted uh, at about 20,000 feet. If you're in the town of Collins, you need to be taking cover because here it comes. You're in that tornado warning. Both of these, both of these are tornado emergencies, Jackie. Uh, kind of amazing watching all this. On Easter Sunday of 2020, a large tornado outbreak would be unleashed in and around Dixie Alley. In Mississippi, several long track tornadoes would touch down, one of which would grow to a width of 2.25 miles wide and would track over 67 miles, impacting Bassfield, Sosa, and Moss at EF4 intensity. Near the beginning of the path, just northeast of Bassfield, the tornado would sweep a well built anchored cabin away with little debris being recovered. Surveyors noted some minor structural defects, including lack of external sheathing and flawed stud to sill plate nailing. 
while trees in the immediate vicinity sustained only partial debarking. It was noted that a vehicle likely impacted the structure as the tornado struck. This vehicle would be found 300 yards away and was mangled beyond recognition. As stated, minor structural defects, speculation of the damage being created by a car that had potentially impacted the structure, and trees only being partially debarked nearby were the reasons why this tornado would be held back from an EF-5, rated as an EF-4 with estimated winds of 190 miles per hour. To the point of this tornado and the Valonia tornado, I find it unjustified to speculate surrounding area and other sources of damage as it's just, well, speculation. Minor structural defects, on the other hand, can make a bigger difference when everything is super exact, so this tornado gets a half pass, but this next tornado gets no pass. Look at the size of this grinder coming into Washington. Washington and Noble and South Norman. Large tornado. Go, Jim. May 24, 2011. A day that produced two separate, extremely questionable tornado ratings. The Chickasha EF4, which I talked about in part one, and the Bradley slash Gold Spy EF4. This tornado would sweep many homes away, with many labeled as well-constructed residencies. One of those homes that was well-constructed and properly anchored was swept away and reduced to a bare slab. However, a metal fence immediately next to the house remained standing, and grass on the property was not scoured, which both points have little ground to stand on. Just because a fence nearby wasn't mangled doesn't discredit the damage. There's no evidence of any debris that could have impacted the house. Secondly, ground scouring is one of the most inconsistent aspects of tornadoes. Take El Reno 2013, for example. It had winds in excess of 300 miles per hour, yet little to no ground scouring was ever noted. So just because there's no ground scouring doesn't mean the tornado wasn't an EF-5. Plenty of other EF-4s and 5s haven't produced ground scouring. Past that house, another home was reduced to a bare slab in this area, and it had anchor bolt space every two feet, which is well above the standard of anchoring required for an EF-5 rating. Though closer inspection of the home site revealed that a large mobile home frame had potentially smashed into the house during the tornado, and a jacuzzi found in the rubble behind the house was still in usable condition. The home frame is reasonable, but just because the jacuzzi was still usable, it just seems more like they're looking for something to discredit the damage, just to keep it EF4. Several more homes that were of good anchoring and construction were slabbed, but due to contextual discrepancies, they were rated EF4. And the tornado would get an EF4 rating, with estimated winds of exactly 200 miles per hour, one mile per hour short of an EF5, the absolute borderline. With all these tornadoes in mind, note that there are more out there, but these are some of the worst offenders that I missed in the first video I did on this topic. If you haven't watched the first video, then I suggest you do so. These tornadoes in this video are, were not a victim of creating little damage despite having intense radar data. These tornadoes are in a group of contextual discrepancies ruining tornado ratings. In my opinion, things impacting the structures and creating damage is reasonable. But taking surrounding area into account to decide the entire rating is not a good idea. For starters, tornado damage paths are always erratic with weird areas of damage due to the multi-vortex structure many violent tornadoes exhibit. Also, we don't fully understand how tornadoes form and impact structures, so it seems unfair to see a well-built home that's slapped, but just because the mailbox is still there it can't be an EF-5. That is an exaggeration, but it's not that far off. And this is just my opinion, so I would love to know what you guys think in the comments. I doubt I will do a part 3 unless I get a lot of valid suggestions. Once again, I will say that this is not an attack on the NWS or their surveying. If you enjoyed, consider liking or sharing the video. If you really enjoyed, consider subscribing. And goodbye.